Because he lives, we can face tomorrow. And because he lives, we can face today. And so we're excited to be here. We all bring our burdens. We all come today carrying them with us as we go. But for this moment in time, give them to God. For this moment and experience something free. Some freedom from those barriers. Some freedom from those pains. For just a moment and give them to God today. Let us pray as we ask God to help us lighten the load. Almighty God, in this day and time of burdens and stress, we come here today and we look for freedom. Freedom from that pain, freedom from that stress. We find it in you. Lord, send your spirit and excite us today. Help us to feel your grace. We ask this in the name of Jesus the Christ. Amen and amen. Good morning. So nice to see all you guys. And I feel so bad that I can't shake hands and give hugs. I know you guys feel the same way. On to the calls to worship. Praise is due to you, O God, in Zion. And to you shall vows be performed. O you who answer prayer. To you all flesh shall come. When deeds of iniquity overwhelm us, you forgive our transgressions. Happy are those whom you choose and bring near to live in your courts. We shall be satisfied with the goodness of your house, your holy temple. By awesome deeds, you answer us with deliverance. O God of our salvation. You are the hope of all the ends of the earth and of the farthest seas. And by your strength, you establish the mountains. You are girded with might. You silence the roaring of the seas, the roaring of their waves, the tumult of the peoples. Those who live at earth's farthest bounds are awed by your signs. You make the gateways of the morning and the evening shout for joy. You visit the earth and water it. You greatly enrich it. The river of God is full of water. You provide the people with grain, for so you have prepared it. You water its furrows abundantly, settling its ridges, softening it with showers and blessings of growth. You crown the year with your bounty. Your wagon tracks overflow with richness. The pastures of the wilderness overflow. The hills gird themselves with joy. The meadows close themselves with flocks. The valleys deck themselves with grain. They shout and sing together for joy. Doesn't that sound like one of the songs that the choir sings? Now we know where that came from. It's one of our favorite um, entroids. I'm kidding. get to continue on again welcome please continue your prayers for those in need of prayer in our community and across the nation here are some of the highlights for the upcoming week the 
mystery before we are looking for any volunteers who would like to help with our liturgy readings for our Sunday services. If you'd like to be a part of that and do what I'm doing today, please call the office. Happy birthday to Carla Dirtle, whose birthday is today. And happy anniversary to Jerry and Gloria McPherson, whose anniversary is also today. Please make sure to... 52 years. 62, 62. Well, I made you younger. <laughs> Please make sure to check your bulletin under the celebration news for more upcoming birthdays and anniversaries. We ask for your special prayers for Emily Zirkin. Emily was a uh, youngster in the church uh, a number of years ago, and uh, she's, she's having some real uh, severe difficulties, so keep her in your prayers. And also, please continue to pray for Trudy Peterson, Bonnie Wickerham, Irene Carper, Barb Hoy, Keith King, Norman Nichols, Kayla and Tyler Bevere, and Don Heist. <clears throat> we continue to stream and post our services to the church website, your YouTube channel, and on our Facebook page. Check those out. They have gotten much better. Preschool packets for fall are now available. Please contact the office for more information there. There is a care package collection box in the lo lobby today. We are collecting items <coughs> as listed in your bulletin to send package to Sergeant Joe Sukowalich, who is deployed. And uh, we would like to show him how much we're missing him and praying for his safe return. So if you will, there is a... Uh, uh, it's by the entrance door. And you can bring this in until July 19th. Thank you in advance for your thoughtfulness. Our church council would like to thank everyone who continues to give at this time in support of the church. If you would like to give a monetary donation to our church, please contact the office. Your donations are greatly appreciated and continue to support the upkeep and maintenance of our wonderful church. And let me tell you, I can verify we have lots of upkeep. Danny knows too. Uh, your church council continues to meet and work with and for your future <coughs> of this church. Right now we have a uh, committee working on a church survey. And um, you will be receiving that in, uh, fall, in the fall. And it will uh, cover a number of uh, items that I know you will want to uh, check out and uh, answer and provide your input. We, uh, we are seeking your input, as we have in the past, for uh, some help with a, a number of items around here. Uh, we are pulling together where we left off with the uh, bylaw review and uh, we'll once again be reigniting this need for working together and clarity for the uh, operation of the church. So just a couple items to uh, let you know we are moving forward and continue to work even with this uh, nasty virus going on. Church pastor or church member does not decide your eternal salvation. You do. You do. Ultimately, God does according to your love and knowledge of Him. Hosea 6 6. Yes, they do the first reading, don't they? For I desired love and not sacrifice and a knowledge of Mind you. We, uh, I get carried away. Are thankful that we do have a church that has a lot going on. We still have a lot of activities happening. There's a lot of ministry still taking place, though we can't always get together to do them. We're having to figure out ways to connect with people new and exciting and then figure them out electronically or how to call and talk to people again on the phone. 
for real. So let us go to the Lord in prayer as we ask for his guidance through this time and for his grace and love to be felt by those on our list today. Almighty God, we do ask that you would hear our prayers. Prayers for our nation. Prayers for our community. Prayers for the people that are in it. Lord, we lift up the names on our prayer list today, and we lift up those that are on our hearts, each one of us with our own prayer list. As our spirit reaches out to you, Lord, we know that you hear our prayers. We are confident in the fact that, that you are moved by our faith, that you are inspired by your love for us to continue to shower your grace upon us. We ask for that this day. We ask for it always. As we lift up our prayers in the way that Jesus taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. first reading <clears throat> comes from Isaiah chapter 55 verses 10 through 13 as for the rain and the snow come down from heaven and do not return there until they have watered the earth making it bring forth and sprout giving seed to the sower and bread to the eater so shall my word be that goes out from my mouth it shall not return to me empty, but it shall accomplish that which I propose and succeed in the thing for which I sent it. For you shall go out in joy and be led back in peace. The mountains and the hills before you shall burst into song, and all the trees of the field shall clap their hands. Instead of the thorn shall come up the cypress. Instead of the briar shall come up the myrtle. And it shall be to the Lord for a memorial, for an everlasting sign that shall not be cut off. Which thing I hate. Repent, or else I will come unto thee quickly and will fight against them with the sword of my mouth. That's the word of God. He ends it here. He that hath an ear and the remnant chosen elect and called do. He that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit saith unto the churches. To him that overcometh will I give to him the Long intro.
And the whole crowd said, yes, right? That was amazing. That was great. Amen, amen, amen. Thank you for that. You will see in a minute that Deb and I did not plan this, but how fitting that song will be here in just a second. Let's listen to the Word of God found in Romans chapter 8, starting at, number, at verse 1 and going to verse 11. The spirit is the life is in the spirit. <clears throat> there is therefore no condemnation for those who are in Christ. For the law of the spirit of life in Christ has set you free from the law of sin and the law of death. For God has done what the law weakened by the flesh could not do. By sending his own son in, in the likeness of sinful flesh and to deal with sin he condemned sin in the flesh, so that the just requirement of the law might be fulfilled in us, who walk not according to the flesh, but according to the Spirit. But those who live according to the flesh set their mind on things of the flesh. But those who live according to the Spirit set their minds on things of the Spirit. To set the mind on the flesh is death, but to set the mind on the Spirit is life and peace. For this reason, the mind is set on the flesh is hostile to God. It does not submit to God's law. Indeed, it cannot. For those who are not in the flesh cannot, or are in the flesh cannot please God. But you are not in the flesh. You are in the Spirit. Since the Spirit of God dwells in you, anyone who does not have the Spirit of Christ does not belong to Him. But if Christ is in you, Though the body is dead because of sin, the spirit is life because of righteousness. If the spirit of him who raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you, he who raised Christ from the dead will give life to your mortal bodies, although his spirit has dwelled in you. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Almighty God, we do ask that today you would help us. That you would guide us. That you would inspire us with your word. That you would help it make sense. So that we can apply it to our lives. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart be worthy and acceptable to you, O Lord, my rock and my redeemer. Amen and amen. This past weekend we celebrated Independence Day. We had gatherings that we could. We got together where we could, but collectively we celebrated our independence. We celebrated the fact that as a nation there were sacrifices made so that we would have freedom. That we would be able to do what we want, so to speak. Inside that freedom that we have here in our country that many people have sacrificed over the decades of time in our country, we have made several sacrifices in the name of freedom. We have engaged in wars and conflicts. We have engaged in civil disputes. We have engaged in conversations. We have engaged in all kinds of things in the name of freedom. 
And here in our nation, we have freedoms. We have liberties. We have things that we call ours. And in that freedom, we have the right to live. In our nation, we have the right to live. But we don't have the right to do whatever we want, do we? We have rules. There are laws. Freedom does not mean the absence of discipline. Freedom does not mean the absence of restrictions or guidelines. It just simply means that we are free to choose whether or not we follow some of those guidelines. In our nation today, we have rules and laws. And if you break those laws, you pay a consequence. And when you get in trouble breaking the law, the consequence says that you are condemned to a certain punishment. Is that correct? That is correct. And so you break a rule, you come before the ruling body, the judge, whoever it is that's making the decision, they make a decision and you are condemned for whatever it is, community service or death. It could be anything. Now back in the ancient times when Paul is writing this, being condemned to death was a horrible and terrible thing which could happen at any moment to anybody for anything. And so to be condemned for something was a horrible fate. And so I've never been condemned on this planet yet. I wanted to make sure, so I looked it up just to see if I have ever been condemned. God said so. Has anybody ever expressed complete disapproval or something typically happening in public or to be publicly criticized? Maybe I have been condemned. Maybe there's been a sentence to a particular punishment. Force somebody to endure something very unpleasant or undesirable. Ugh. I think some of us have been condemned for some things. Prove or show of guilt to be incriminated. Officially declare something unfit for use, like a building. When a building is condemned, friends, it's marked for destruction. Isn't it? It's, there's a paper put on it. Everybody who drives by the house knows that that house is coming down. It's being destroyed. It was at one point somebody's happy home. But it's fallen under disrepair. And now it is condemned for destruction. And Paul tells us that we have the freedom to choose through Christ whether we want to be condemned. Not by the judge on this earth, not by the law of this earth, but by the law of heaven. Freedom says that we have the right to act, speak, or think as one wants without hindrance or restraint. We have the privilege to do that. Freedom tells us that we are absence of being subjected to foreign domination or tyrannical rule, and nobody likes that. Freedom says that we are exempt from restrictions, that we are in a state of immunity, that we have liberty, the state of being free from imprisonment and slavery. And the last thing that we have is freedom is the power of self-determination attributed to the will, the quality of being independent. And oh, do we Americans love our independence, don't we? How we long to be independent and not be ruled and told what to do. And Paul tells us we don't have to be told to follow Christ. You should want to. He's not going to force you or make you follow him. He's just simply going to love you and want you to follow him. And Paul tells us today that the condemnation for our sin, and all of us do it, is death. We are all condemned to it. Our bodies are sinful places. And we have hope in Christ that if we follow him and we believe in him, our condemnation is relieved. It is lifted. There is a stay of execution lifted upon our spirit that says once and for all time that we are free. Free. For once in our entire life, free. Because that's a freedom that cannot be taken away even in death. It cannot be taken away. 
It is that freedom. It is that feeling. It is that affiliation. It is that connection that has helped men and women throughout the decades endure the struggle that we have talked about the last few weeks. It is that very freedom, that freedom in Christ that has led people to do amazing things in the face of adversity. Can you take it? Because they know that there is a bigger freedom at play. Yes, we all hurt in this life, and we've all suffered setbacks, and we've all felt pain. And it is all very real. And realistically, it is all very temporary. As much as it hurts, as much as it's painful and disheartening, it is only temporary because the freedom in Christ that we have says that we will make it through. And how many of us want to experience that hope? How many of us want to experience that joy? How many of us want to experience that type of freedom? Only Dan raised his hand. Dan, my brother, I'm with you, okay? This is where, oh, there's one. They're starting to understand the question, right? Here we go. Understand the question. Who truly wants to be free in this world? We do. We want to be free. Free from restriction of spirit. Free from the feelings of pain. Free from the worries of life. But we know the reality is life is stressful. But we can live with the freedom that knows. That the Christ who sacrificed for our freedom took our punishment so that you can be free. During this month of July, for the next few weeks, we will be talking about this very freedom. We will be talking about this very inspiration that is a want to follow Christ. Not a have to. It's a get to. And so today as you leave, I want you to realize how free you are. Free in Christ. And it is that freedom. And it is that characteristic. And it is that identity that helps shape our climate in our community. It is those principles, and it is that character trait that will guide our decision-making in our country. If Christians unite, and Christians unite in prayer, we cannot be stopped. We can offer freedom like nobody else, because we have Christ to offer. Let's pray and ask God to give us opportunities to share that freedom this week. Almighty God, we do ask that you would guide us this week in celebrating the freedom that we have not only in this nation but in our spirits that transcends country that transcends the world a freedom that brings us all together globally into one community a community of love through Jesus Christ help us this day to feel that strength to feel that power, the power to change the world through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen and amen. So this is going to be an exciting month. I don't know about you, but I'm excited about what's going to happen in this month. As you leave today, there is an opportunity to give back and, and, and give a, a gift to the church, a gift to God for the ministries that continue to go on. If you would bow your heads with me today, and receive this blessing. Almighty God, send us out of here today with the confidence that we are your people, that we are your family, that we are joint heirs with Christ because we believe. We believe in you. We believe that your son came to pay our price so that we may be free, free in you. Bless us this day. Bless all of us here and all who hear this. And they may feel the love and grace of Jesus Christ each and every day. And know the power of the Lord Jesus. We ask this in his name. Amen and amen. Go now in peace. In the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.
one other than the true Christ. Second Thessalonians chapter two.